And welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. First major conversation this morning, we are going to be focusing on the president's refusal to assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And of course, uh, the moves uh, to be take, taken by the National Assembly or the expected um, a reaction from the National Assembly after their break in a few weeks' time. Um, it has, of course, created a lot of conversations across the, the country uh, since yesterday. Uh, we're speaking this morning with Barrister Evans Ufeli, who's going to be joining us. Uh, good morning, um, Barrister Ufeli. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. But just before we bring you in, we would like to share a quick report on uh, this uh, story. And the conversation uh, starts off right after. Stay with us. Of direct primaries across the 8,809 wards across the length and breadth of the country will lead to a significant spike in the cost of conducting primary elections by parties, as well as increase in the cost of monitoring such elections by INEC, who has to, who has to deploy monitors across these wards each time a party is to conduct direct primaries for the presidential, gubernatorial, and legislative posts. The addition of this cost with the already huge cost of conducting general elections will inevitably lead to huge financial burden on both the political parties, INEC, and the economy in general at a time of dwindling re revenues. All right, uh, of course, uh, that's uh, Femik Bajabaya Mila there um, sharing uh, the letter from President Mohamed Buhari. Brother Feli, um, let's start, you know, with um, the reactions from people. A lot of people have said that they don't find this shocking in any way. Uh, they had expected this, seeing the drama that had uh, played out in the build-up to, you know, yesterday's, um, uh, well, you know, the, the president's eventual uh, failure to ascend to it. So are you one of those who, you know, isn't shocked by this? Yeah, why, 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 why people aren't shocked by this is because um, there have been a consistency in, in vetoing the electoral amendment uh, bill. You remember that before the 2019 election, President Ocho did uh, veto the bill, okay? And now people are saying that the uh, President is unwilling to have this and it's the law. Irrespective of the reason President has given for his uh, rejection of, of veto. And people are also of the view that the President is quite very push to even decisions. And that is why they are not really shocked, why they are not coming to law. Because if you look at uh, the, the letter of MNC, it, 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 it with so many innovations that to put us forward in our electoral existence, okay, which we inform on our good governance. So when you see uh, the president full footage and very lukewarm, who has a document or an act, uh, a bill that is supposed to advance our democratic engagement, then you, you begin to wonder why the, so the reasons give are not uh, very clear. They are they are not um, clear to me. Uh, so I, I would have thought that the president would have signed it. But he said to take the another look at it and bring it shortly and they will sign it. So hopefully, uh, let's see if that will work. But you know, by, by the principle of law, the National Assembly is supposed to, if they are willing, uh, because I don't think the United Assembly is a uh, is an assembly that wants to override the president's decision. They, they should have been able to do that by law. Okay, but uh, it's, not, it's, it's the ninth assembly that uh, dominated by the ruling party. I am even surprised how they talked about uh, some of the content, especially as it has to do with direct primary and all that. So I'm even surprised at that uh, because. Uh, uh, in dominated by the ruling party, and one would have thought that he would play low on all those things. But the, the fact remains that they have done their part as Mr. Assembly, the first room. Now the president has also done his part. I think the National Assembly should take it over from there. 
Okay, uh, let's also look at some concerns uh, that has been raised as regards the president's decision of holding us and to, uh, you know, that particular bill. Now, a coalition of civil society organizations are saying that this would have a serious implication on INEC in conducting uh, the forthcoming elections of the FCT um, council area, the Ekiti elections on Oshun State, as they would have to fall back to the uh, you know, Electoral Act of 2010 as amended, and it would deny INEC of the opportunity of testing some of high innovations. Do you agree with the civil society organization? Absolutely, absolutely. Because if you look at that uh, 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 act, it is one that is riddled with so many uh, irregularities. There are so many issues there that are not very innovative. So that is why uh, one would have thought that the president would have signed it so that it can be test strong. It can be test strong with the update the forthcoming staggered elections that we have for the federal event. That is how to, to reason. That is how to think about the future of the economy. Let's have this thing time now. Let's test strong it. If there is any hiccup, we can also uh, call for an amendment. Okay, but, but to just say, uh, to just settle it that way, I think it begins to throw a lot of questions. But the reasons why we are in court of the election and the election matters uh, largely because of that 2010 act. Most of the politicians are in court uh, just because of the provision and the, the way that act. Okay. So by the time we have we have a better law to reduce the burden on the judiciary to so see uh, uh, who who to meet the people. Let's have an act that we that will determine that will give the people the power to determine who leads them. Not one that we take the that will also lead to litigation on any litigation that will burden the judiciary, burden the system, the policy that oversees the entire place. At the end of the day, what we to have is that the outcome are not very important. So I agree with the civil society organization. Okay, so Ufeli, um, there's also the angle of throwing away the baby with the uh, bathwater. Um, there's a couple of things that would also be lost here, mostly, uh, of course, uh, the electronic transfer of votes, which was one of the biggest parts of this, um, uh, this bill. Um, so do you, do you think, you know, that is heartbreaking, you know, that we might just be losing out on that, um, you know, particular step in our electoral process simply because of, you know, the direct primary controversy? Uh, I think we may have lost uh, Barrister Ofeli there. The conversation is mostly on the President's refusal to assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And of course, uh, what steps the National Assembly should be taking moving forward? Um, how much more work needs to be done before the 2023 elections? Uh, Barrister Ofeli, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So I was asking with regards the idea of throwing away the baby with the bathwater. Um, you know, there's uh, the there's other angles, other very vital angles and um, you know clauses in that bill uh, that may be lost simply because of the direct primary controversy that President Mohamed Buhari pointed out. Uh, the of course electronic transfer of votes and uh, of results rather um, is one of the ones that the things that has been mentioned. Um, is this should this be worrisome uh, for Nigerians looking forward to 2023? Yeah, I, I think uh, when I saw that, when I saw that uh, direct primary, the moment that was uh, being debated, I, I told myself that this is a good to render, to render this, that this whole process, uh, uh, knowledge, knowledge, because uh, I don't see why, why, uh, the, uh, laws determine how uh, political parties uh, go about uh, 
So, so uh, apologies, you know, it's not, uh, we're not getting very clear sound from you, but uh, are you then saying that you, you agree with those who say that the, you know, direct primary controversy was simply placed there because, and this is, you know, some of the statements that I've heard, uh, it was placed there because, you know, the current administration is not very interested or excited about, you know, allowing for electronic transfer of results. And so, you know, these are some of the things that have been placed there or, is, you know, simply exist there to scuttle, you know, the possibility of um, electronic transfer of results. Uh, it's logical. You know, you know, there was a lot of pressure against that electronic transfer, especially from the ruling party. They, they very much opposed it at the beginning. But when the public outcry became high, okay, they considered. So whoever is reading that way that possibly the complaint of them brought something that will nullify everything at the end of the day, that person might not be absolutely wrong. He may be wrong, he may not be wrong. But there's a sense in which it is right to think that these people may have might have seen there to to to, to make sure that uh, the other issue, together with it, does not see the light of the day. Uh, because that, 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 that's what, what I was saying. Okay? But whichever way, I think that soon we will we'll come to the right compromise. We'll come to the right compromise. Because the idea is that we must advance democracy. This is 2021. Nigeria can no longer ask us to, to, to be using that 2010 act, okay, when the world has happened. If you look at it, the, the, that 2010 act, there's a lot of things on it that makes the process full of pitches, but you have to translate uh, manually. You have to do a lot of things. But when offline, that is where reading takes place. That is when politicians who want to win at all costs will deploy resources to make sure they support the process and then render everything that at the end of the day the advance party wants to report. Then at the end of the day, we'll not be looking up to the judiciary to determine who has won or lost the election. Instead of looking to the people, the people, because power is supposed to rely on the side of the people. The, the function of the judiciary is not to decide for the people who need them. It's to interpret laws. It's to interpret laws. But what will happen by the import of this act is that because of the deficiencies of the current act, it creates a lot of problems that the politicians have to go to court to resolve. 
And when they get to court to resolve that, the outcome is that the court, through the interpretation of the law, would have indirectly chosen the leader, uh, the person who will lead the people. So that is why I say that let's let's go away with that instead of let's have this and then let's build on it and advance our democratic system. All right, Ufeli, let's also look at the expectations of uh, the National Assembly at this point in time. I mean, report has it that uh, they are delaying recess and they have started collecting signatures just to override. So do you think that the National Assembly should be throwing the part of overriding the president's veto or the, they should uh, consider removing that clause of the direct primaries and send back the bill to the president? Well, either way, either way they do it is up to them. It's up to them. Uh, I, I would have suggested that um, the direct primaries issue be, be looked at and possibly removed and sent back to the president. But knowing who the president is, he may not sign it also again. He might decide to bring another issue again. Okay. At the end of the day, uh, we do a lesson and now we will not be suffered by it. I, I you know that before you have to send names of uh, 90 days before election uh, to INEX. So, if, if the president is going to delay it for another time, it's better that the uh, National Assembly Continue the process to allow the president. Because that is, that is the law. If you subtract, uh, they can do that. Except we are sure that, uh, if they take out the part the president is complaining about and they will work on it and take it back, the president will sign it within 30 days. And that is not guaranteed, uh, by the way. So the National Assembly should do what they have to do. Okay, you also mentioned, I mean, in the course of this discourse, you mentioned that uh, you don't see the Ninth Assembly, you know, going ahead with that process of overriding. And uh, we know that they will require two-third majority. So uh, why would you say that? This is not an APC concern. Although we know that, yes, APC might is dominating in terms of, you know, the numbers now in the House. I said that because, I said that because of the comments made by the by the leadership, some of them, when they have been in uh, office, they said that uh, they were not elected to fight the president. But anything the president did, that will have to remember. You should remember that uh, they, they said they told Nigeria uh, that uh, anything they did. Uh, so that, uh, there was a time they summoned the president. Uh, some time they told uh, the president did not talk. And then some of them went to bed. So you see, you see, when you have, when you have that kind of person, it's all wrong right to think you have people. Uh, yeah, because there are people in that house that, that, uh, contributed and took the time. Yes, I can let someone else know that. And then the people were said, they voted yes and were put for the president to ask them. There are some of them. That may not want to be part of overriding the president. You understand? So that that is the reason I I think that, that this assembly does not appear like the assembly that we want to override the president on the issue of question, given their antecedents, given the way they have behaved in the past, where the issue uh, that relates with the president. So that that is why I said that. And, uh, and I think uh, it's based on what it's based on what it's based on what I have been saying in the past. All right. Um, I, 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 well, since we're talking about the National Assembly now, I, I want us to go back to the Eighth Assembly, you know, and get you to also respond to those who have said the, you know, Saraki-led, Bukula Saraki-led Saraki uh, National Assembly also had an opportuni opportunity then to veto uh, against President Mohamedou Buhari's uh, refusal to sign the Electoral Act. Um, do you think that they had an opportunity then and they probably should have made that uh, move back then? So the reason the, pre the, reason the President did that time, the reasons were quite very important. Because if you look at, if you look at, if the President has signed it that time, 
to be able to get from the last part. Because then, the next day in the trial, uh, you know, I said, so get it, get the point of the company. That would have been a day. Okay? And the session 34, 34, 36, where they talk about your cross reference. Okay? Then, then there were, there were, uh, clearly issues of law that the defendant had finally said, it has been practicable to even address that and let them out. So that is why the legal attorney put me out of box and then decided not to go and ask the question because it would be uh, useless to actually go to the test to see what they can use it. But this one, it must be an issue of this issue at all. Direct primary or indirect primary are not simply uh, within the level of possibility of the legislation of that method. So, I mean, this one is quite different. But, but uh, I will tell you that the eight assembly was a better assembly. It was a better assembly because it was an assembly that heard the justice. Uh, uh, to ransom and make sure that they get to uh, do the right thing at that time. There is, um, of course, so just a little above a year to the next general elections. Um, these conversations are important, and of course, the sign of this bill is also pretty important to encourage uh, more and more Nigerians uh, to vote. Um, because if you, of course, have listened to conversations across the country, you must have, you know, also heard a, a lot of people saying that they really have very little interest in voting again in 2023. And so, you know, these things, you know, would determine whether we will be able to increase the number of people who are registered and will participate in the electoral process or not. Um, there's also, of course, those who have criticized the current administration because, you know, President Mahmoud Abari came in as a reformed Democrat. Um, Mr. Afeli, does that still stand, seeing the way things have played out with this bill? Well, well, the, the president has, has never been high on, you know, on uh, advancing legislation that will push uh, the country forward. I mean, uh, when you say you came as a reform that and all that, that, that was uh, a theory. In fact, in, in practice, I have not heard anything that shows that the president is passionate about democracy. Uh, rather, he has acted in ways that just that uh, the most is an attack of that is exactly what I what I have been said so far that the prison disposition is a contest about uh, the, 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 the the policy, the economy, the country as a whole. So that is exactly how I feel. As regards uh, the electors, uh, it is the responsibility of the political party and that's uh, to carry out the digestion so that we can have a issue in application. But I want to let you know that many Nigerians are also not very confident about our system. Uh, so there should be a lot of education, political education for political participation, so that we can increase our uh, civic responsibility and then look forward to a better system. A better system, but then part of the better system is what to is an electoral act that will give us that uh, platform. Okay, so but let's also look at you know part of the uh, major win for the electoral bill. I mean, if it eventually sees the light of day, um, which is the transmission of result electronically. Now, do you think that that would actually, you know, go a long way? Uh, paraventure, we have that in our elections come 2023. Will it eliminate all of the irregularities that we experience in our elections? Of course, it will. It will because then we won the election. All the electors are going to be at the polling unit. Once it is concluded, it is transmitted electronically. Transparently. Okay, so... That and then that there will be there will be a record there will be a record that of the number of uh, registered voters 
the number that voted and who voted who, when and how. We will have all that, all that transmitted. So that anyone who is contesting the outcome in court, a court will just rely on the transmission record. And who is still open to be to give us a speedy dispensation of electoral matters and electoral petition is our effect. So that will make it clear. And when the court is making pronouncement, the court will make a pronouncement in support of the person who actually won. Not in cases where the court will have to now go into technicalities to act like in most states in the last election, the election, and, and all that. We begin to have a lot of issues because uh, we are not sure what was transmitted and all that, the malpractices that went on over the line and the rest of it. And it's not just, it's not just the electoral transmission. There are other innovations. That that act that uh, that will promote you know uh, a system that works, and then we also use the opportunity to tell our people that they can get from selling and buying votes because on election day there's a huge market. Some people came to sell, some people came to buy, and that itself should be eradicated too along the line. And this will be for uh, education. All right, uh, Barrister Evans Ufeli, thank you very much for your thoughts uh, on uh, this very, very major story um, across the country this morning. We look forward to speaking with you again. You're welcome. All right, uh, stay with us here on The Breakfast uh, on PLOS TV Africa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into talking about, of course, more matters from the National Assembly. This time, it is about the 2022 budget, more than 17 trillion naira, which was eventually passed yesterday. That comes up after this break. Stay with us.